All right, good morning. Today's April 2nd, 2024. The time is 9.30 a.m. Can I get a roll call? Yes. 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 Look at the agenda. Can I make a motion that we move the presentation by Scott to Vicki with Clark Deeds down with the discussion and action on the uh, battery ordinance? I get a second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Uh, All on the same sign, personal pass. Any other questions on the agenda before we approve it? To reports from the departments. We'll start with the county clerk, which I believe is not here. Bill, do you have anything to do? Okay. I'd say we move on. Is she on her way? No, she's ending an election. Okay, so we'll move on from her and we'll move right on to you. Um, no, I think we're going to be starting, hopefully, to be getting a mobile home tax rolled out for waiting on that. To help Callie finish up with the stuff we need, and I will be starting interviewing for the for an open position in my office this week to get some resumes in, and hopefully some decent people that want to work. So, some will say. Thank you, Chris. All right, move on to assessment. Okay. So Andy Rose with. Uh, Deb Matt will be here tomorrow to start with camera implementation. So he'll be here for eight weeks on Wednesdays from one to four to start with that training. Um, I think there's a piece that still needs to be figured out with IT and hopefully with Adam here today that can get figured out. Um, I had uh, just hired last week a new deputy clerk, Brianna Boy. Um, very happy with her, very excited for the knowledge she has and the things she can help bring us into the future. I think she's going to be an asset in getting all the sketches and camera work done. Um, we're finalizing our board of review decisions today and tomorrow. Once that's done, I can begin the final abstract work. Um, once I complete that, then I hand that off to Brienne to start her process. We have to wait for Illinois Department of Revenue to approve all my numbers and abstracts to be able to roll forward. Eagle View had to go out and recapture some areas for our flyover. That has now been done. Um, I emailed her this morning and got that official word. Um, once that, from that date, so I'm gonna say starting today, they basically have a 30 day window to finish doing what they need to do internally and then they'll send me a copy of that imagery. So at least it's in our possession. It may be a couple of months before it gets put out for the public, but at least there'll be a link and access for our department to have it. And then we can start working with um, our township assessors, picking up all these changes that this change finder is going to have found for us. We have a fully executed IGA agreement with Lovejoy, Milford, Prairie Green, Stock, Stockland, Multi-Township. So we should start seeing a check coming from them April 1st um, for the work that we're going to do until their new township assessor gets certified. Um, I have an IGA in front of you guys right now. That is Beaverville and Papinaw. So they have been without a township assessor for quite some time. I don't even know for how long. The issue with me going with my $12.50 that I talked about is some of them aren't haven't budgeted for it. So I have come up with what I thought was a fair amount 
they haven't agreed to this, I'm going to send this off to them. It is $860 to get them through. Like, th this is kind of introducing them to what we're going to do in hopes that this will get them on board to getting and hiring their own person. Um, again, when I did speak to the supervisor of this multi township, I think they were only paying like $4,000 a year so even what i'm requesting is going to be over that so there'll probably have to be some negotiation being done between us and them the twelve dollars and fifty cents i think we'll just have to start once everybody's aware of what we're doing this is what it's going to be and they can budget for it or get a township assessor yes where's the four thousand dollar going that you said they had budgeted? um to nobody because they don't have one well, I thought they just budgeted. Well, that's what he thought had been budgeted in the past, but they've never had anybody doing the work. It's not, it's been left undone. So they never collected that money? Or they used money somewhere else? That they I would have, I'd have to get into a deeper they conversation with them. I'm sorry? They, they just never spent it. Just, so is it a building up in a bucket somewhere? No, I mean, so, the, I mean, the tax money would be, but the, the expenses would just, you know, it's, you don't use it for that year, then the next you just end so that the next year would be whatever they budgeted. So, I mean, so if he doesn't use the 4000 in fiscal year, which will end in March 31st, or which did in March 31st, if he didn't use it in his fiscal year 24, they've got to re budget to spend that amount again in their next year's budget. So, if they don't use it, it's just not spent. Well, I'm just saying, it sounds like the money is there then for me to. Well, he may, have, he may have it budgeted, but that doesn't mean. They may have collected it, or like I said, like I said, it was in their expenses, is what you're talking about, right? You know, I just had a brief conversation oh, with Ryan. I don't even know who. Ryan? Yes, I think it was Ryan. So just to kind of get a feel for who I'm going to need to talk to, who I'm going to need to present that to, to kind of get the ball rolling. So just saying, it sounds like that there might be some more money out there besides the eight hundred sixty dollars. And that's a month. So, I mean, I kind of came up with that based on that amount and what we're charging Milford. Okay. okay. So Sorry. that's a monthly amount. That's not okay. an annual amount. So, again, that might have to be a discussion. That would be and, you know, okay. I, I just want to be able to start working on this and think we should be compensated for the work that we're doing if they don't have a township assessor. So that I'm going to... Um, draft up an email and send it to him and hopefully be able to attend one of their multi-township meetings or one of their each of their township meetings I, I don't know but to get this ball rolling um i i have been told i have not confirmed this that middleport may have contracted with somebody to do their assessor work so they have somebody in place and i had somebody come into my office in belmont asking how to get certified if that doesn't happen quickly, they'll be next on my list to do an IGA plan. So um, we're, we're tabling that IG or the GIS data release to third parties, um, basically because there's no other essays out there that have an ordinance. So if you remember from last committee meeting, we talked about needing an ordinance to charge for these parcel state files. There's other counties doing it. They have no ordinance in place. I did get the response back from some of them saying, well, it's probably not a bad idea to have an ordinance. And once you get one, we just shoot it by directive. So we're, we're still working on that. We still think it's a doable thing. We just, you know, between discussions between Jim Devine and I, we just want to make sure we're covering all our bases with that. So. so. That's all I have. So, so I, I mean, I guess I want to discuss and at least approve for me to present that agreement as a starting point for the Beaverville Papinaw multi township. If we're okay with that charge, and like I said, I imagine there's going to be some negotiating going back and forth with that. 
that per parcels what you decided? That is that is a, an amount I came up with based on their parcel. It's deviating from that twelve dollars and fifty cents I originally had spoke about. Reason being is I feel like I need to give them some time to get their own township assessor and work on, okay, if we don't, this is what we can expect the county to do type of thing. So I just want to make sure we have we're going for a a reason of why you're getting this number for each. That's just what I'm trying to make sure right now, because once we set this going forward, we'd be using the same process. Right. So my reasoning for Milford was they were paying their township assessor $22,000 a okay. year, and I divided that by 12. That's how I came up with theirs. I don't have a good solid concrete number from Beaverville, Papinaw, so I didn't use the same map Sorry. to come up with theirs. No, that's okay. I just want to set something. No, I, I agree. I agree. And I was debating on that when I walked in here. So I have all the parcel counts. The Milford, we'll, we'll just say Milford Multi Township, for simplicity, has a total parcel count of 2,878. So if you're charging them $1,800 a month by their parcel count, and then if I take that same number by the parcel count of Beaverville, Papinaw, we're looking at $608. So it was a little bit less than what I put on here because I, I don't think I did my math right the first time I figured out that 860 because that's what I thought I was doing. So again, just reassuring everybody, Go ahead and give us how you got that number. Well, I got that number based on what they're currently, what I was told was currently budgeted. In addition to, there's a difference. So I'm looking at it from an aspect of the Milford Multi Township had an assessor up until right. January, up until December 31st of 23, which means work had been being done on it. Beaverville, Papnaw. I don't even know when they had a last township assessor, which leads me to believe there's a lot more work that's going right. to need to be done okay. there. So I increased that fee based on that. So I guess I'm looking for, do we need a solid number moving forward for the same thing? Because they all kind of have a different I think background. You're gonna start, I think you're going to start running into more intergovernmental agreements with uh, townships not having assessors or you could, there could be multiple issues. I just want to make sure whatever we set here today, when we go forward to the next one, we already have some, something set that's already a plan that is. <clears throat> well, as a compromise, do we want to go out and put out for bids to a third party to to do this function to see what the main market rate is to let the townships know, hey, what we're offering is a better deal than you can get on your own. Right. I don't know that they tried to get it on their own or if it's just been left for this for the for my office to do and nobody's ever questioned it. Um, the problem is you get what you pay for. So. Yeah. The township assessor, like Jim Sherrill, who's going to go out and do 110%, mm -hmm. they're going to pay a lot more than somebody else who is going to do the bare minimum, pick up mobile homes, work any permits for demolition and new construction. That's it. Not, not doing any analysis of our sales ratio. But if you put it out for bids for the county wide, and can't you? And Jim Sherrill's going to say, I would assume, hey, anybody in the county, residential, I'll do it for X amount. And then couldn't we use that to give the alternative? Right. To and them? I'm just trying to cover it so that they get somebody. I, I don't want to do the work. Right. But I just yeah. want to be being compensated for totally the work we have to do. And I'm with you. I just want to make sure where we set today, 
Right. So that's where I'm going. I guess I'm going back and saying that that 860 should probably be 650 dollars. So that way I'm using the same form. You know, if I divide by parcel what I'm charging Millsburg, I'm charging them the same thing. So I guess we can change that. Again, I, I increased that based on they had been without a township assessor for five plus years, I would say. Um, maybe I, Kirk would have a better idea. I know it's a little bit more his area. I do understand why I want to charge a little bit more because you're going to hit something up here, not something that should have been right here both times. Right. But I want to make something that is the same over okay. and over. So with that being said, then it should be 800 and $49 or $800, no, $650 yes. rounded up. So, okay. so change this, and this is good to go. If I change this to $650 per month, does anybody see that on your bottom? It is the very bottom line on that first page. Nope, you're okay. And that's the only place I have a dollar amount. I just want to make. I make a motion that we accept this uh, make a mutual agreement with Tappanall and European Real Townships with the adjusted amount of six hundred fifty dollars a month. Go to second. Do you second that? Do we have any further discussion on this? <clears throat> Last time we just rearing I just want to make sure. No, I I agree and I'm just no, I think it's trying fantastic. to figure it out as all. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Uh, we've had enough discussion on this. Do I need a roll call? Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Cass? Whitlow? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Motion passes. And we will table your other one. And that's it for you today, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to planning and zoning. We'll move with the discussion and action on setback variance for Robert Burr. Me? Yeah. Okay. Where do I need to send? Up here, probably. Just slow there's nothing really. Yeah. Is it? Julie, do you want to go through your. That's what I'm just sitting here because I, I didn't know what how you wanted to proceed. What time are you going to be out of here, sir? Are you ready? Well, what time do you got to be out of here as soon as possible? I, I, I've got an 11, 11 45 appointment on Champagne, so. Let's go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Who, who gets one of these, Julie? Um, All these guys yeah, up there? Yeah, at the table there, Robert. I see that sign. Yeah. So you want to come to him? Yes, thank you. You have an extra, that's fine. Or, you have an extra? Oh, here's an extra. You an extra one? Here we go. Here's an extra one. Now we got it. Y'all want to Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for seeing me again this morning. What I, my name is Robert Gore. What I am, I'm here for asking for a variance on a uh, setback on a zoning thing on a, on a place where I'm, I'd like to put a shop, like a shop, shed type of thing. Uh, I don't know anybody here, so I'm going to just kind of give you a little bit of background information on me. I was born and raised in Iroquois County. I had school in Iroquois County. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I farm. I'm like a fifth generation farmer from Iroquois County. Uh, I have lived on this farm. We bought, we bought this farm from Norman and Arlene Bowman back in 1990. And you can see the map, or kind of, can you see the uh, little map part that's kind of shaded a little bit? We bought that part of the farmstead. They did not want to sell the whole farmstead, so we bought that part of it. So what I would like to do, to see a little shed there, there's a little drawing there right to the south of my garage. That's where I would like to put a shed. Oh, it's glare. Okay. Now, Steve Lehman owns the rest of the property to the outside of it. That's Steve Lehman's big, big tool shed there. So Steve Lehman owns that, and I have a, I gave that to Julie already. She's, I got to uh, acknowledge that he has not had a problem with this to redo this thing on here. But anyway, I need a, 
I need a setback on the back side of my property. I'd like to have, I'd like to go four feet from the back side of my property. And then I would have like four feet on the back side and between my, my garage and my shed, I'll have about five feet. So that's, that's what I'm asking for, is that four feet of variance. And then you take down the shed? I will, I will eventually take down the garage there that's kind of in front of right. my shed and then the, guy, the uh, LP tank will have to get moved. So that'll have to get done. So that, that's all kind of done already. Right that's will be done. But, uh, it's an FBI building, 30 by 48 building. So they're going to be the ones that build it. Uh, like I say, any, any other questions? You got the read uh, from Steve. You've got the. Yeah, I saw them where he wrote that. Or make sure that's covered. And you said in the, in the backyard, uh, which would be further west, you have your septic field. Uh, okay, what, what by my, my, my septic is up kind of up just to the west of the house, right. the house part of it. And then I just then going because there's kind of an open area uh, to the south of that. That's where my leach field is. So I, I can't right. go backwards to the west. Right. So you're kind of restricted. On I'm your kind of restricted to where, where I need to go with this. So understood. I'll say that. Julie, I want to get it correct on the motion of giving him the variance. How many feet are we going to put in then from the four, four foot from the property line? Any further discussion? Yes. 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 Approved. Thank you for your time, sir. Yeah, you can keep those. Yeah, you can keep those. Thank you. Let us know when you need any inference in your concrete. Pardon me. Let us know when you need any inference in your concrete. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'll keep in touch with you. You can probably look, you don't want everything. So. Thank you. Thank you for letting me out. I've got to get to it. Huh? The handprints in this concrete. Oh, that's good. Put in the Put prints in the so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right now, they have it scheduled for construction sometime at the end of May when they can start. Oh, so congratulations. That's where we're at on it. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to keep on moving through. Uh, the next will be the discussion and action of the microbrewery in the existing building. Good morning. I'm Matt Jones. Here's the uh, round some slides <coughs> and booklets. Yeah, same thing, I think. It's uh, I think it's slightly right? updated. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I just add some concerns from last time with uh, possible security. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next time. Tuesday, right? All right. Um, the first page is just shows my detached garage. Uh, after that is just a drawing of where everything is. Very small operation. Uh, next page is just who we are. Uh, my brother Mark Dearlin and I are going to uh, we're in business together to start this uh, brewery. We're both uh, veterans, uh, retired police officers, um, and we've got uh, higher education in brewing science and operation to handle this business. Next page is the plan. Uh, production only. Uh, we want to serve the surrounding communities. We're going to operate out of a pop-up camper and like to be open sometime this summer. 
no selling beer out of the garage. Next is just a little security cameras, locks. Next few slides is just our small operation. Using about 70% of the garage. Um, then you get to the mobile tap room, jockey box, pitchers. That's kind of like what our idea is to operate um, a pop up camper. Next one's uh, home brewery laws. I put that in there just to show that we're, we're in the home brewery level. Uh, home brewing is anything from a gallon to a barrel, which is 31 gallons. So our capabilities is 20 gallon batches. That would be 80 gallons of finished beer per month is our max capacity. That would be under 1,000 gallons per year. Uh, next page is just brewing ingredients. Uh, we'll be purchasing the majority of our ingredients from uh, Country Malt Group in Chicago. Uh, looking to purchase some hops from Livewire Hops and Landlocked Hops that are grown in Illinois. It's really important to us. Um, still researching where we could purchase flake corn locally, so if anyone has any leads for me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, for water and sewage, our water comes from a well on the property that is ran through a reverse osmosis system. Sewage goes to a septic system on the property that's shared with my home. Uh, we use uh, non-caustic alkaline brewing cleaner powder and the uh, star sand that doesn't harm the septic system. Uh, grain yeast true. Uh, leftover grains are fed to our chickens or made into dog biscuits. We collect uh, yeast to use in future batches of beer. After fermentation complete, there's about four cups of true that is sent to the septic system during the cleaning process. So I just put this page in there just to show that really not a, we don't have a lot of waste in this production level. And that concludes. Free for any questions. So is that 80 gallons per month going to be like the next five years, or do you expect to grow? And if it does decide to grow, will you move out of the county to a commercial area, or will you want to stay in if, the residential? Area? If we want to grow, we uh, look for our next step would be uh, purchasing a building to open a tap room and production brewery to grow so we can service more customers. So really, there's not much uh, growth left in that building. We're, uh, I don't want to take over the whole garage. So, and that's about it. So. Yeah, my concern was where you were in the that people aren't going to be coming down there. No. The no, no, uh, no selling out of the, the property. That'd be kind of All right. And that reverse yeah. osmosis system that takes yeah. care of the vibes and stuff like that. So it, it, take, it okay. takes it to almost zero. It's like 99.9, .9, whatever RO. Uh, system to do its own. All right. Four chambers. Yeah. Where's the beer, sir? Is, where's the flood zone? I know I'm out of the flicks. Oh, that's in the flood plan. I'm in the flood plan. But it wouldn't affect anything if it flooded, right? No, everything's off the ground. Are you talking about the uh, the, the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, the water, it got pretty deep there if it flood back there. Yeah. In your plan on. Yes, sir. Uh, Whatever page number that is, three or four, you talk about the plan there, and you talk about using a mobile tap room. Yeah. Have you talked to the county to get a liquor license? That's a whole another license I have to do, other than the class three brewers license for the um, area. Right. I'd have to get another license right. for so the great. basically food using a food, it's grouped together as a food truck. Even though I'm just doing, have you checked into that then to see if that's possible yet? It's possible in the state they so approved no, no, no. that. Sorry, uh, county level, you'll need a county liquor license. Correct? Yes. Have you checked into that yet? A county liquor license? Yeah. Next would be a microbrewery license. Okay. Have you checked into that? Yes. Okay. And I looked it up. Uh, look on the laws and everything about it.
I don't know anything about county's office, so forgive me. But if that, that's permitted, what precedence does that set if someone else wants to open something later? Because this is being allowed in the residential area. I've been on the Left Secret Planning Commission for over 15 years. Okay. And we have really refrained from putting commercial projects in residential areas. I can only think of one, and that was an existing property a carpenter had used in his process of doing doors for homes, et cetera. The, we let a sign company get involved with that. And that's the only one that I know of in over 15 years. So because of the precedent we're setting. Right. Is there a way, Julie, with our laws that we can have a temporary, I don't mind incubation to get a business up and going and started. Sure. But is there a way to limit the amount of time that something can take place? Like the uh, hours of operation? Negative. I'm talking about like a, 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 this. You're talking like six months in operation. A year, to... let's give it a year to like be a trial with a special, with a conditional use, correct? Yeah. And just say it's it's good for a year, and that way it gives the person the time to, you know, get his feet wet and, and try to get introductions to the whatever establishments in the county. It's over here talks about you produce cakes for the uh, local businesses, yeah. which is not part of your plan, but your capabilities, which we sure. hope you grow. Yeah. We're we're talking to, right now. We're talking toppers and. He's saying that he may need like two to four cakes a month. Everything goes in the cakes anyway. Right. So it, it's just something that locally, you just push our beer out there other than just doing private events. The other question too, I guess, after we just heard some report this morning on lead or water-based questions is, is there any inspections that take place for? The health department would do. Yeah, well, excuse me, uh, where exactly would this be is kind of a question. Uh, in, in my, my garage. garage. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Nine four zero South, South Belmont. Okay. Yeah, right across from the public school. I mean the pool. Okay. In the park. All right. Um, are you in city water there? You mentioned no. water. Well. Well. Yeah. yeah. It, it would, would have, have to be, be what tested, tested right. So. Oh, we'd have to get you the well to be a non-community well. Sure. I believe. So there are requirements underneath that. Yeah. Sure. Just off in the office the other day. I was I've been out in the office to come in there. About a month ago or so, I, I stopped in. Or... That was me. I was asking the question to just to find out. Okay. Um, yeah, but you make sure that your well becomes a non community well. Sure. Um, making product. Yeah. Yeah. They're making product. They're making product for a year. For sale? Well, not for sale, sale. just for not personal. Sale, but no, he's been growing for a year. Well, it, for sale is the. Oh, yeah. Different. Uh, similar to other type, other businesses um, that operate off of their own private well supply that are going to serve a product to the public um, eventually. Just need to make sure the water is safe. And if it's a if it's a municipal water supply, then you don't have to go through this process. Sure. It makes sure steps to your own private well. So, yeah, we have to make sure that your well is not a community well. Thank you. I can tell you what's required. Um, okay. <clears throat> there is regular testing that has to happen to make that happen. Yeah, if, if that's going to, it would turn out to be an issue, we could, we, from earlier on, just bought five gallon jugs of water to use for our purposes, not that much. So. Thank you. Yeah, um, your septic may also, you have your own private septic yes. or are you on city? No, septic. septic. Okay, we have to take a look at that as well. Sure. Um, we have to look at what you're expecting to put out mm. um, and measure that with what you currently have installed for your septic system. Um, and you need to be sure. Does that include the bottom of the limit that groups? I know it's got an osmosis system as well, pull some of that out. I have to double check. I hate to say one player for sure, speak well for so. Also, then, have we checked into any restrictive uh, covenants or requirements in any of the local subdivision? or lot owners on what you can and can't do. I haven't heard anything about that or haven't seen anything. A lot of subdivisions yeah. have covenants and restricts. I know where I live, we can't have a business or commercial activities in our 
Oh, it's kind of like yeah. an HOA kind of there's no thing. HOA. I haven't. Well, I know there's not an HOA, but there can be restrictive covenants as part of the deed. I don't know if we checked into that. So we need usually to that happens when they show you that during when you do your title, right? right. Uh, I didn't get anything with that, but I yeah. I understand. I'm, I'm not the one that uh, monitors that. <laughs> well, so you need to go probably next door to because this license is based on his property being able to have a commercial business, and that needs to be one of the boxes that's checked. So it looks like we have several boxes that need to be checked before we can go forward. To be fair to the neighbors, to be fair to the city consultant, uh, with the idea that we can start a business. Sure. I do. If you want to start a business, and I'm all for it. I'm definitely in there because I really appreciate the business. Um, the biggest issue we're all having, I believe, also is it's residential. We have a, a, a microbrewery in a residential area. It, once we set this, it's not just you, sir. Well, I, it's, I they can start popping up pretty fast. We want to put something like this in a business district. Um, like I said, I want you to grow. I want you to be huge. I, you know, whatever you be the next uh, Bridgestone, that'd be fantastic. But uh, it's just going to set wrong because in my eyes, I just feel that once we do something residential, there's going to be another one. And somebody else is going to have another one. They're going, to, they're going to use this example over and over. I do think you need to be with the health department, um, have discussions with them. I believe you need to go to the city and have discussions with them to make sure is there anything they need to talk about. No, unless he's going to take his mobile uh, cart into the city, then he'll have to get that license. That's he'll right. need to talk to the county. To yeah, he's going to have to talk to the county too. You need to start that. <coughs> sure. Health department discussion on that. You need to check into the the homeowners around you for any restrictions on what you can. Sure. And the other thing I like to see is some sort of a, a restriction of time okay. that would allow you a chance to grow, but yet not have a bunch of fly down there. And sure. Figure, yeah. Uh, if that makes sense, is that kind of? Look, Belmont's going to get busy in the last five years, <laughs> right? And so as we grow older, yeah. we're probably going to do some talk about that too. But I'm just, yeah. I'm all for it too. I'd love to start a business out of my, my garage, but then it's going to want to become a craft grower since marijuana is legal in town. And then it's going to want to put an auto shop down there. Right. Before you know it, you're going to be telling me Belmont's going to be a four lane road. Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to trapping. He's really going to be a Probably, probably, yeah. probably. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's the price of the precedence that you set forward. Right? But if we could put a time, Okay. Could you live with a you know kind of a, I could yeah is is a year something to consider or what's fair to you? Why don't we do this? But why don't you go back have a conversation with your brother? What sure. your thought is, Julie, is there a this like is there because I have to pay per I, year I anyway, those, right? You know, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah, and I think it's awesome, but. I want to set some kind of presence where it's not residential. That's that's my my okay. issue. Um, I want to do something of some type of a temporary permit for him that we can have an agreement on. Sure. The other way to do that too, possibly, is with the M1 liquor license. If the liquor license is only good for a year, you know, then maybe. That would be a way to solve that. All the licenses are like a year right. time frame anyway. Maybe a cap, having a cap like, hey, we, we, this is the start of the business. Mm -hmm. Can we agree up to three years? And then each year we could come back and go and revisit. or revisit. Like, are we good to go the second year? And then third would be the, <coughs> the I'm, I, that's something I would be yeah. able to add to. Yeah, so I think it's something you do with your business model. Yeah. Sure. What, what your plans are, future so you have, you know, where you're growing at. And what your thoughts are, then you can move to someplace that would be. Uh, we have we've we've looked at probably forty buildings, but it's either leaky roofs or or something outrageous, not even close to being priced. So it is the Vince Shaw Ballots that they have been looking. So I watched the period for uh, and Sheldon, yeah. yeah.
how long technically have they had your ability in your garage to do what you're doing? The whole year. It's just home brewing level. So yeah, That's fine. I've been brewing the whole year. So they're just serious about. Oh yeah, their craft. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to table this uh, uh, discussion on the uh, conditions permit until we get some more questions answered. And, uh, I have reached out to help like a month ago, and then she was supposed to be uh, looking over, over uh, Artesia, like what they had to do and stuff. Exactly. They're going to get back to me. So, well, was it a place in Shelton? No. No, that's not. Uh, oh, no. No, no. Oh, you're one oh, of oh, 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 Shelton. I guess so. Yeah. 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 You ought to go there and just see what they've done. Oh, it's it's nice. from the best in, you know. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Is there, which one? The Artesia. I don't yeah. think this man's been over there to see yeah. what growth can be. Yeah. yeah. What I like about them is they finish early. And there's no, you never hard to hear anybody. It's very calm, it's very smooth. Uh, it's not very long. There's a city one, see if they'll offer grants for rent on buildings in there. We can talk about it. That'd be an idea. Have a conversation. Yeah. I need a second. You need a second. I'll take it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Combine everything, the discussion on the wind, With solar, the solar, and the and battery. We can start that off with introductions if we can. That's what you're doing. Okay, thanks. That's why I'm going to follow the wind. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, We'd like to introduce Scott Trevigny from Clark Beats. So, thank you. I'm uh, Scott Trevigny. I'm an engineer with Clark Beats. Uh, we are a consulting engineer based in Champaign. Our part of our company has a small but mighty mechanical engineering team that regularly works with uh, electrical things including wind energy and solar energy, battery systems, backup systems, things of that nature. So that team uh, is you know active throughout the Midwest and I am on our municipal team. Uh, so Doug had approached us regarding the Solar farm is being constructed at the process, soybean processing plant. And that was a design that we had done, uh, both the civil design as well as the mechanical engineering design. So um, I understand the county's got some ordinances in place that they're looking to refine and, and implement. Um, so my background is on the municipal engineering side of things, um, dealing with ordinances like this and zoning and restrictions. Um, so I'm here to help uh, the county navigate this process. Doug, thank you for reaching out and anything else I can help with, uh, please do not ask to ask. We sent Scott uh, uh, our existing ordinances. We've also sent him some updated ordinances that this committee has been working on for the last few months with the idea that he could help uh, organize and, and make our ordinance consistent but also doable and, and uh, that. He has started that last week and has made good progress. We don't have anything today to actually put before you for a vote, but I think we're getting closer. We should be able to bring something to the committee by next our next committee meeting on all three ordinances. And we have run them by our state's attorney and continue to run things by uh, Jim to uh, make sure we conform with the, with his office also. And then before we go further, we double down. Is uh, Jeff going to go over some of the issues in the ordinance? Just to hash some other things out in it. Uh, make it a little clearer. That's a second. Anything else? Uh, 
Anything else that you would like to do? Yeah. I'll throw out or uh, I guess I'll just I'll throw out big picture uh, items. Um, so I, I have had a chance to review the, the wind and the solar ordinances that are in place and they're very solidly done. Yeah, recommended some refinements on those. The battery energy storage uh, is uh, it's a new, newer technology and that's something that the whole industry is kind of navigating through right now. The zoning ordinances, the regulations of those systems throughout the country is really in its infancy. So uh, I think this is a situation, and Doug and I discussed that we're going to be a iterative process. So the idea would be to put some reasonable restrictions in place and governance and regulation with the expectation that as the technologies evolve, uh, the ordinances might evolve along with them. So that's one of those things where we're not going to get it right the first time. Uh, however, we can be persistent because we're government, that's what we do. And we'll get it dialed in as, as problems arise, we'll get them addressed. So I think the, the county's got a great start here with solar and wind in place. Uh, next thing would be to get the, the battery energy systems dialed in and go from there. Have you been through some of these processes uh, of, of the uh, going to the actual permitting and the, and the construction on a municipal project where we, you kind of know timetables of of how long things take and etc yeah our, our and again we're very strong in the solar energy market especially here in illinois uh, that's something that we've done regularly with uh, solar farm companies so the process is you know it's lengthy uh, the construction period for these systems is quite extensive uh, I, one of the metrics that i drew out is you know one wind turbines approximately equal in this is an approximation of about 30 acres of solar energy field uh, development. So, you know, when you get into 30 acres of solar panels, that's a lot of labor effort that goes into those installations. So the, uh, the permitting side of things is, you know, pretty typical, uh, you know, six months to nine months to kind of get through it. Um, the vendors that install this are well-versed uh, throughout the country. It's, it's not a newer technology. It's pretty table stakes in that respect. And uh, it really just comes down to mobilizing the crews, having the local community uh, be able to support the construction. Uh, we've seen shortages in hotel rooms, quite honestly, because these crews will travel the country and when they set in, they're there for a couple of years to make the installations. So uh, that's one of the biggest struggles we've actually seen with our vendors and these installations is just housing for the crews that are in the installations. Uh, you know, the land is readily available typically, you know, the, the, the materials are readily available at stage well. It's actually just putting up the labor that's going to be installed. A little more background for everybody else here. Well, the reason we're even talking to Scott is uh, he would be the, uh, the main engineer for the county to go out during when the insurance company really goes out there for the initial inspections uh, to oversee that their equipment's done right, that there's something that you might see that's overheating. Uh, another set of eyes out there, a technical set of eyes. Uh, that I've said to you before, it's, it's nothing, I'm not putting something, I'm not trying to add on, I just want to make sure that you've got the help that you need uh, with somebody next to you that might catch something. Uh, and always a second pair of eyes, not a bad thing. Now this would be paid for by the solar company or uh, windmills or whoever, the battery storage, whoever has a facility would be paid for him out there, just to give everybody an idea. Said. And we all know it, but still, I want to make sure it's said. Is there anything else that you want to ask him about? Like I said, uh, Doug and I have sat down with him and had a meeting with him. I just want to make sure that you gentlemen got the meeting, if you had questions for him, give your thoughts, your ideas, your concerns. I know we're taking it slow, but I think it's better to take it slow and take some more bites and have an understanding of everything. Same two things, the other two board members here today, you got questions? I don't mind hearing from you. I appreciate that. So 
what would be the timeline for an ordinance, tentatively speaking, that we might come up with for? We're hoping for the next board meeting yeah. in May to have them available. And then another question I would have, as far as an environmental impact, are these battery storage places, just in general terms, are they on concrete slabs? How is that, you know, from a, if you could just speak to that. For sure, sure. The, so the battery systems are typically containerized and just with industry standard, they're standard shipping container, they're 20 foot or 40 foot connex type size, just because it's, it's on the trucks very conveniently. For the siting, uh, the vendors that do these installations, they do vary between stone base and concrete base, depending on kind of what they're dealing with. In this area, just because of the frost heat potential uh, for this environment, I expect they would actually put down concrete pads with footings to keep it vertically stable through the winter months. Uh, so that would be my expectation as what they would probably do in Iroquois County. Uh, but it, it's, it is up to the vendor to kind of identify how that would occur. So um, they do like to keep them vertically stable so that the connections aren't being flexed during the changing conditions. And then one more thing, the panels themselves, uh, I saw in the news about a week ago, a huge solar farm in Houston that was just devastated by hail. And the concern of the surrounding homeowners there was carcinogens in their water tape or water supply. So what are these panels made of? don't know the answer to that. I'll look into that. That's all right. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming. This is all the concerns we have. This is fresh to us. It's, it's I don't want to say new and exciting, but it's it's new and scary because you don't know what the what ifs are. I mean, we sat for 20 minutes, a half an hour, just talking about is there any way to really slow it down if a, a fire starts? Hold it down to just one of the cells inside the uh, the container itself. You know, the thought is um, that's why that burn we've talked about. Uh, my fear is they say it's only four foot or eight foot between the just between containers. Correct. Yeah, I I think it should be more than that. I mean, I'd like to see something though where this is just me speaking out of turn. It's just I want to see something because the fire department can't do anything. At least they can throw a hook onto it and pull it, my thinking is just to connect and get away from the rest of them. Because that can be catastrophic. Anything from you? Thank you for coming. Uh, there's nothing else for Scott or the uh, more discussion on the ordinances. We'll table the reactions till next month. We'll have a village report. Doug, okay, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So we just got to read village report and then the county code book. Oh. Thank you for taking over. Julie, would you like to go over any of your, uh, you've done an excellent job of trying to recapture what's taking place in the, uh, to show our revenues and that, so thank you. I see your spreadsheets on there. Um, for the month of March, our building permit fees collected were 68, 60, 28. Um, I want to just call out on the DevNet report. It has um, a smaller amount on it, and that's only because I have a permit that I do not have entered into DevNet yet, um, as I'm waiting on information from environmental health um, that applicant needs to get, and so I don't ever enter the permit until I have that approval letter from them. Um, outside of um, the monies that we've collected and everything, I just wanted to let everyone know that 
I know that there's been some concern over the amount of alternative energy people we have throughout the county. So I did attach a letter um, that I had Jill put on the county website for anyone who's concerned about does this person or that person have the right credentials to be in our county. That's basically all I have. Questions for Julie then with Jerry? Yeah, I think you're doing a fine job trying to, to report the activities of the department. Um, ongoing project. So yeah. Thank you. Yep. Also, then uh, do a blue drops around again and then there so we don't you're knocking on our own door and barging in the. Yeah, so be careful. Good. Thank you. Now, we want to discuss the uh, review of the county code book uh, concerning our building codes. Uh, I don't know if we've got any further on that. We've talked to our inspectors. They're comfortable if we update uh, the building codes. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to define what year range of codes that we want to adopt for the different trades um, and then make those books available. Need to kind of get that done. I, I think they're all comfortable in 2021. Why don't we try to do some work for next time and see if we can come up with a proposal on those? On those. I, I was thinking I read somewhere where the governor or the Springfield was thinking about changing uh, what they, the books you can use. I just thought I saw that recently, so we'll make sure we comply with what Springfield is. Uh, Didn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Right now. I think it'll be an easy thing to solve once we do decide which one to, to right. adopt. Um, so, yeah. Any more questions on building code? Julie? Okay. Any old business we want to discuss? How about new business? Want to go home? So moved. In second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.